Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve. This month, we're learning to deepen our walk and worship to the King, so we'll even be more amazed at the depth of His love for us. Join us today for the message called, To the King, Whose Word is Power. time of worship. If you have your Bible, please turn to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37. We want to talk today about a very famous passage of Scripture made into a song. It's the Valley of Dry Bones. It was in 1917 when the submarine, the USS S-4, was commissioned into service by the United States Navy. It served for 10 years, and then in December of 1927, off the coast of Cape Cod, it was accidentally, inadvertently rammed by a Coast Guard destroyer. As the sub was coming up out of the water, the Coast Guard did not see it, didn't know it was there, and rammed the sub, and the sub was damaged severely and began to sink. Well, they called for rescuers to try and come and rescue the men on the sub, and the concern was, because of the damage, that they would run out of oxygen. Divers were sent down to try and rescue the guys, and they were communicating with six men through in the torpedo uh, area of the sub. They would communicate through Morse code as they would tap on the the hull of the submarine. And the last thing that the men inside the doomed submarine ever tapped out were these four words, is there any hope? Is there any hope? Bernard Baruch, the great statesman of yesteryear, said that the saddest word in the English language is hopeless. Hopeless, the saddest word. Freddie Prinze, the comic from the late 1970s, committed suicide, and in his suicide note, he wrote these words, there is no hope for me. There's no hope. When people lose hope and think there is no hope, that's when people say, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I'm going to take my own life. Why? Because there's no hope that anything's going to get better. There's no hope for a brighter tomorrow. There is no hope. And you know, hopelessness is one of those things that uh, can come in degrees. It can come in areas of life. We can run into hopelessness in terms of uh, marriage. Lord, this situation is hopeless. I don't think this marriage is ever going to get better. I don't think my spouse is ever going to really be the spouse that I need them to be to meet my needs. We can get hopeless when we're wanting to be married and there's nobody on deck, there's nobody on the horizon, nobody's on the radar screen and you can lose hope and just say, God, I guess it's not going to happen for me. There's not Mr. Right or Miss Right and you lose hope. You can lose hope in your career. You can lose hope as a Christian because there's a sin that is, has a stronghold on you that seems to always eat your lunch and you never seem to be able to break free and you never seem to be able to rise above and you just get so discouraged and you say, God, I guess there's no hope for me. One of the great verses in Scripture is Romans 15, 13 that says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is the God of hope. But God knows that there are situations that we hit in life that seem hopeless. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was a priest, and he was writing at the time when the hope was 
dimming and pretty much had gone out for the house of Israel, for the people of, of God. If you know your Bible history, you know that uh, Israel, the, the northern kingdom, they, they were taken over by the Assyrians in 722 B.C., but Judah, the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, with the capital city in Jerusalem, that stayed more faithful to the Lord for a longer period of time, but then they strayed so far from the Lord that the Lord allowed Babylon to come in and in 605 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar came in, and he slapped around the people of Judah, and he put them under his thumb. He took back captives. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were part of that group. He took them to Babylon, and then he set up his vassal kingdom there with the Israel had a, or Judah had a king, but that king was just under the thumb of Nebuchadnezzar. 597, Nebuchadnezzar came back and slapped them around some more to let them know he was boss, took more captives back all the way to Babylon. And then when there was an uprising, Nebuchadnezzar came in in 587, besieged the city, and in 586 B.C., he broke down the walls of Jerusalem. He destroyed Solomon's temple. He wiped the city out, and the people were devastated. You know the book of Lamentations? Lamentations is Jeremiah's book that talks about the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, and he is grieving from the depths of his being. The people of God were saying, it's hopeless. Our whole future is God, gone. God made promises to us, but they're gone because there's nothing left and, and nothing can happen of what God promised. That's not going to take place. Just look around you. We are exiles in Babylon and Jerusalem is destroyed and it sure looked bleak. But God had a message in Ezekiel 37 directly to his people, to the house of Israel. And it's a message to us today. To us who are facing hopelessness and impossible situations, it's a message about the power of God and His Word. I want us, as we read Ezekiel 37, in honor of God's Word, I want us to stand as we read it. Ezekiel 37, verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass among them round about, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life and I will put sinews on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you that you may come to life and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may come to life. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope has perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you will come to life, and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. You may be seated.
The people were without any hope. They said their future was gone. But God is the God of hope. Hey, what is God's answer to a hopeless, impossible situation? Maybe you're facing that in your finances. Maybe you're facing that in your marriage. Maybe you're facing that in your health. Maybe you're facing that in your future. What is God's answer? Well, first of all, God says, understand the importance of honest assessment. Honest assessment. Very interesting. The Lord takes Ezekiel, and he takes him and puts him in a valley of dry bones. It's a valley, no doubt, that had a, a battle at one time, and because of the battle and because of what was going on in the land, they weren't able to bury the dead. And so those who had fallen in battle... They died there in battle, and the animals came, and the birds came, and ate the flesh, and the birds picked the bones clean, and all that was left was a bunch of bones in a valley, and a valley is a depressed place. You know, we sing that song, down in the valley, the valley so low. Uh, a valley is a low place. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's the, he didn't take him to a mountaintop. He took him to a valley, and it was filled with bones. And he said, what do you see there, Ezekiel? He had him walk around. He's walking around, and he said, lo, there were very many bones, and they were very dry. He's doing an assessment, and his eyes are open to the situation, and the situation is Bad. It is black. It is bleak. Can these bones live? God asked Ezekiel. Well, the answer is no way. I and mean, there's no way these bones are going to live. Well, there's not any flesh on them, and they're, they're, man, they've been bleached out by the sun. No way. So he's doing an assessment. Did you know that it is important to do a personal assessment, a personal inventory? It's important to really look in the mirror and see what's going on spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically. Listen, all of us have issues and problems, all of us, from the greatest of saints to the worst of sinners, we all have things in our lives that aren't quite right. We all have areas that's like, hey, I'm working on this, I'm working on that. You know, in the Christian life, you don't arrive. You grow in the Christian life. You get stronger in the Christian life, but you never arrive because we, we are people who have uh, sin working in our members, and we're constantly, as it says in Galatians chapter 5, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh so that you may not do the things that you please. So there is within you, there is within me, whether you've been a Christian for uh, two days or whether you've been a Christian for uh, 55 years, there is this battle going on inside. And there are always things that we need to work on. Nobody arrives in the Christian life. And all of us have issues and problems. You remember when Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, he says, judge not lest you be judged. And he said, watch out that you don't point out the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own eye. Many of us like to do that. We have the little jingle, sin in others I can see, but praise the Lord, there's none in me. And we like to be everybody's personal Holy Spirit. We say, oh, well, you're not doing this right, and you're not doing that right, and you're not doing the other right. But how many times do you look in the mirror at yourself? The business book, Good to Great by Jim Collins. One of the things that he says, if, if you have a company and you want to take a good company to be a great company, one of the things you have to do is confront the brutal facts, face the brutal facts. you got to look in the mirror and see where are you. When I was selling chemicals for Nalco Chemical Company, we would sit down with prospective clients, and we'd always ask them this question, where are you now? What's going on in your water treatment program? Where are you now? And let's really assess where you are. Not where you want to be, but where are you now? The second question is, where do you want to be? The third question was, how are you going to get there? How can we get you there? So honest assessment is critical. It's critical. I was reading uh, just a few weeks ago in the book of Genesis, Rebecca, 
who was Isaac's wife, she got pregnant. She was pregnant with twins and the twins were fighting inside her womb. And she said this, she said, if it be so, why am I this way? And she went and inquired of the Lord. Now she was talking about the struggle in her womb, but I, I underlined that in my Bible. I thought that is really good. Lord, why am I this way? Why do I have, perhaps you would say, why do I have such a problem with my anger? Why do I have such a problem with comparing myself to other people? Why do I have such an insecurity in me? Why do I always think that I look bad and all I can see is my body and my body doesn't look right to me? No matter what I do, it just doesn't look right. Lord, why am I this way? She inquired of the Lord. Hey, honest assessment. All of us have issues and struggles and problems, and we need to honestly look at them. And then all of us desperately need God to intervene. We are desperate for God to intervene. Verse 3, and he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Well, when God asks you a question like that, I mean, the, the obvious answer is no way, Jose, although you don't call God Jose, but it's, it's no way. God, can these bones live? I mean, there's no life in those bones. And so, no, but Ezekiel's smart. What does he say? Oh, Lord God, you know. That's a good, safe answer. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to put down E on the multiple choice. Don't know. Uh, but God, you know. And what he's saying is, God, apart from a miracle of yours, these bones can't live. So you know, you know what you're going to do, and you can do anything, and so, oh, Lord God, you alone know. Hey, all of us desperately need God to intervene in our lives because we can't do it on our own. We can't face the issues on our own. As we take an honest assessment of our lives, we say, this is too big for me. This is too hard for me. As so many men struggle with lust, how are you going to conquer that in your life? It's too big. It's too strong. It's the flesh beating uh, and taking over and causing you to do things. As Paul said in Romans 7, the good that I do, I don't do. And the evil that I don't want to do, I do. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Hey, we need the Lord to intervene. We desperately need him to intervene. And here's the good news. When you face an, a situation that seems impossible, impossible, is really I'm possible with God. Impossible is I'm possible with God. Can these bones live? Oh, Lord, you know it's impossible with man, as Jesus said, but with God, all things are possible. So understand the importance of honest assessment. Number two, understand the importance of the word of God. Again, he said to me, verse four, Prophesy over these bones, speak to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. O dry bones, listen to what the Lord is saying to you. And he did. And he spoke to the bones and he preached to the bones and said, Oh, hear the word of the Lord. And then things began to change, and there was a noise. And stuff started to come together. As the song says, the ankle bone connected to the shin bone, and the shin bone connected to the knee bone, and the knee bone connected to the thigh bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. There's power in the word of the Lord, and God wants us to see that. See, it's the word of God that is alive and powerful. What was Ezekiel supposed to say to the bones? Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. He wasn't supposed to say, hey, Ezekiel, God didn't say to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, come up with something that you can say to the bones. No, he spoke the word of the Lord. There's power in the word of God. Hebrews chapter four and verse 12 says that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. King James says it's quick and powerful. New Living Translation says that the word of God is full of living power. That's in this book. It's full of power. See, the Bible's not like other books. You and I read other books, but this book reads us because it's alive and, and it's active. 
And, and it, the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Now, let me give you an example of how powerful the Word of God is. Dean Sieberhagen was in our church, my dear friend from seminary back in the 90s. He was in our church over the Christmas time, and he's a professor at Southwestern Seminary in Missions. I got to meet his dad when I was at Southeastern Seminary in the 90s going to seminary, and Dean's dad's on fire for the Lord. They're from South Africa, and his dad told me a story I've never forgotten. He said that there was a fellow in South Africa who came to know Christ, and he was so excited about the Lord, and he was so excited about God's Word, and he said, there's power in the Word of God. So what he did was he began to take Scripture verses, and he began to put them on three-by-five cards, and he would stand on the street corner, and he'd hand out three-by-five cards of Scripture verses. There's power in the Word of God. He handed out one Scripture verse to a guy it was Genesis 5.27, not John 3.16, Genesis 5.27. It says this, so all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. That's what the guy got. I mean, that's a far cry from John 3.16, huh? Uh, nobody puts Genesis 5.27 under his eyes for the football team, you know? They don't have signs, Genesis 5.27 in the stadium. No, but that's what this guy got. This shows you the power of the Word of God. That guy got that scripture verse, and he said, no way. No way did this guy, Methuselah, whoever that is, live 969 years. He said, I'm going to look that up. He had the reference, Genesis 5.27. He looked up Genesis 5.27, and he says, well, that's what it says. So he looked at some verses ahead of that one. He looked at some verses after that one. He kept reading to find out some more things about uh, Methuselah and his family in this book, and as he read and read and read, he came to see that he was a sinner in need of a Savior. He put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. From one verse, Genesis 5, 27, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. And the Word of God is that which causes a commotion in lives. Look at verse 7. I love this. So he said, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. The bones are all strewn about, and all of a sudden, as he says, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, there's a noise, and those dead, dry bones begin to rattle. And then they become, begin to come together. And there is the, a commotion. That word rattling literally means a commotion, a vibration, an uproar. Then you start preaching the Word of God. You start sharing the Word of God, and there's going to be a reaction. People, the, 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 people may hate it, but they're going to react to it because it's alive. It's alive. Why in our world today, why are people so against Christianity, people in America, the left in America, so against Christianity but so for Islam? Why is that? Because Islam is a lie and Christianity is the truth and the devil hates the truth and he'll, hey, believe all day on the lie but don't believe the truth and you start sharing the word of God with people and there's an uproar and people start to get rattled with that. They say, uh, putting Scripture on a billboard. Well, that's hate speech if you put on certain verses. If you put up Romans chapter 1 on a billboard, that's hate speech. No, that's the Word of the living God that says if you don't turn around, you're, there, there's going to be, there are going to be consequences to that, and they're going to be severe, and they're going to be eternal. Hey, there, there is a commotion that comes with the Word of God when you preach the Word. Paul and Silas went to Thessalonica. They preached the Word and they preach Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. And man, there was a commotion there. And the people got upset. There was an uproar in the city. And they said this. They said, these men who have upset the world have come here also. What a testimony that it would be said of you, of me, that you upset the world by doing what? by preaching and teaching and sharing the word of the living God. Hey, there's a commotion 
when we preach the word and teach the word. The word is alive and powerful. The word causes a stirring and a commotion. And the word of God is what people desperately need. It's what they desperately need. Those bones were all strewn about till Ezekiel began to preach. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. And all of a sudden there was a rattling and those bones come together. Maybe you're here and your life is just a mess. It's just spread out all over the place. You say, man, it's, it's like a bomb went off in my life. And I, this broken relationship and that broken relationship and this debt and this problem. It's just all just a mess. The word of the Lord is able to take your life, which is a mess, and the dry bones which are scattered all over the valley and bring them together and bring uh, order to your chaos as you put yourself under the word of the Lord. You know what the command is to every preacher? Preach the word. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus who's to judge the living and the dead and by his kingdom and by his appearing. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come, Timothy, where men will not endure sound doctrine, but they're going to want to have their ears tickled and they're going to turn aside from the truth and turn aside to myths. Hey, we're living in that generation where people don't want to hear the truth. They get mad if you speak the truth. Listen, we are called, every preacher is called, every church is called to preach the truth and speak the truth in love, but don't back off on the truth because it's the truth that sets people free. We live in a world today where people are coming to church and preachers are standing up in church and they're saying, well, hey, you know, it's okay that you're a certain way. It's okay that you have this sin in your life. You just come to the Lord with your sin and he'll bless you. Baloney. He doesn't bless sin. I don't care what sin you have in your life. If you're going to hold on to that sin, you can't come to Jesus. You have to say, God, I I repent of this sin. I turn from this sin, and I come to you. And the moment you come that way, he receives you and washes you white as snow. God's word is power. He says this in Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like fire? declares the Lord, and like a hammer that shatters a rock. That's God's word that we can share. So the Lord says, hey, you're facing a hopeless situation? Honestly assess. Understand that you must honestly assess where you are. Understand, number two, that there's power in the word. And understand, number three, about the Spirit of God. So Ezekiel preaches, hear, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, and the bones come together, And it says in verse 8, And I looked, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may come to life. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. What's he talking about here? The word in Hebrew for breath is ruach. Ruach. It's also translated spirit. The same word for spirit is ruach. In the New Testament, the word for breath is pneuma, and the word for spirit, the Greek word is pneuma. The breath and spirit are interchangeable. Genesis chapter 1 and says that, verse 2, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was on the surface of the earth, and the ruach of God was moving on the surface. The breath of God, the Spirit of God was moving. Why is the is the flesh that has come on the bones and the sinew that's come on the bones and the bones that have come together, ankle bone to the leg bone and leg bone to the knee bone, knee bone to the shin bone and all them bones coming together. Why is there not life? Because there has to be the spirit. There has to be the spirit that is breathed in through those bones. You know, God formed Adam, Genesis chapter 2, formed him from the dust of the ground and Adam was all there. His body was all made. But then he said... And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. 
And Adam became a living soul. We have to have the breath of God in order to be alive. And God, this is how he works. It's the spirit who gives life. Jesus said in John chapter 6, the flesh profits little, but profits nothing. It's the spirit who gives life. And the Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. And so the, the bones didn't come to life until he said, prophesy to the breath. Hear the word of the Lord, and the breath came upon them. And this is how this works. As we gather in whatever our hopelessness might be, whatever our situation might be, the answer is found in the word of God when the spirit of God takes the word of God and speaks it to our heart. Listen, I can preach truth, but only the Holy Spirit can impart truth. And if the Holy Spirit doesn't impart truth, it's just truth that's going over you, and it's not landing in your heart. Hey, it's the Holy Spirit who gives life, and it's the Holy Spirit who gives us victory. Not only life, and some of you are here, and no doubt there are people here in this room, people under the sound of my voice, and you're just dead. So you, you go to church, you put on your glad rags, you come, and you say, oh, I'm here, I'm gonna sing the songs, I'm gonna praise, I'm gonna do all these things, but it's all in your head. And it's not in your heart. The Pharisees had all that. It's all in their head, not in their heart. The devil has that. Scripture says in James, you believe God is one? whoop de doo Paraphrase. whoop de doo The demons also believe, and they shudder. They tremble. They know God is real. The devil knows that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. He knows that he died on the cross and rose again from the dead. The devil is not an atheist. But the devil knows things about God all in his head, and it's not real in his heart. He's never trusted the Lord. He hates the Lord, but he knows he's real. Some of you are here, and you know the Lord is real, but you've never put your faith and trust in him. You don't have life. You're just dead bones, old dry bones. You, you have to yield yourself to the word of God, to the spirit of God, and the spirit brings life, and the spirit brings victory. Verse 14, and I will put my spirit, my ruach, the Lord says, within you, and I will come, and you will come to life, and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. You facing a hopeless situation? Are you like those guys on the ship tapping out in, in, your, in the deep recesses and the deep secrets of your heart? You're not verbalizing this, but you're tapping it out and you're wondering, is there any hope? The hope is found in Jesus Christ. The hope is found in the Word of God. The hope is found in the power of the Holy Spirit. As you get honest about where you are in life, as you... Uh, come before the Lord and come before his word and yield yourself to his spirit, then that's when life comes. That's when victory comes. That's when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. There's a wonderful song that has been written from Ezekiel 37. We cry out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. Listen, we're going to sing that as our invitation song. If you're here today and you're facing a situation that seems impossible, a situation that seems hopeless, or maybe you have a son or a daughter or a mom or a dad or a loved one or a neighbor or a friend who's facing a serious situation that seems so hopeless, maybe you want to just come and pray for them. Maybe you want to come and pray that, that God would Continue to use this church in a great way to speak his word, not only in, the, in this community, not only in the Arklatex, but beyond in every uh, city in America and around the world that God would use First Baptist Texarkana to send out his light and his truth to change lives. Hey, maybe you're here and you're lost you're just dry bones you're, you're going through the motions, but it's not real. Today can be the day for you. Thus says the Lord, if you'll come to him in repentance and faith, he'll save you and he'll change you forever. He'll put his spirit inside of you. There will be a life, there will be abundance, there will be victory as you walk with him and trust him. My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ 
is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. One day you're gonna have to give an account of yourself to him. And here's the big question. Are you ready to meet him? Have you received Christ as Savior and Lord? Or do you just know about him in your head? Listen, today is the day for you to make peace with God, to come to know him as Savior and Lord, personal Savior and Lord. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself. But Jesus, I believe you are God in the flesh. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again from the dead for me, for my sins. And I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me, to cleanse me, to come into my life and to live in me and through me. I surrender all to the King. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer with me to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. From His Heart is the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you, and He has a wonderful plan for your life. You can find out more about that plan. Just go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real love.